Hi everyone and welcome back for another video. Um, today's video is going to be sharing with you some unfortunate news, which is that I've had a bit of a setback. My crown is breaking um, and it's quite severely broken um, and I didn't keep on top of it when I initially um, realised that my hair was breaking but the only reason I didn't keep on top of it was because um, I couldn't identify exactly where my hair was breaking because I didn't seem to have um, too much breakage at the ends and it's only like in the last um, week that I've discovered um, just how bad my crown breakage is so I'll, I'll show you without um, going into, into long-winded explanations Okay, so here is my crown, and as you can see, at the root, there's a lot more hair than there is at the tip. And this bit here, you can probably see just how short this little bit here is. Um, and this is sort of like repeated all throughout my crown, which is really, really disappointing news. Um, and, you know, it's just, God, it's just awful. Awful, awful, awful. Anyway, so, obviously... When you discover a setback, you have to ask yourself what you're doing wrong. And um, having sort of examined, you know, my routine, um, I realised number one, I'm probably manipulating my hair too much. Um, and then probably the biggest thing of all is that um, I've stopped using Curl Free Curl Instant Curl Free Curl Instant Moisturiser, which is an absolutely fantastic product for my hair. It made my hair really moisturised and it helped to detangle my hair. Um, but the only reason I stopped using it was because it ran out and um, you guys know how much I hate going to salons or Sorry, not salons to um, to hairdress to hair shops to buy um, products because of the way they treat um, They treat me when I not just me, but just treat us in general You know what I'm saying um, when you go in there and so I try and buy my stuff online But obviously that curl free curl instant moisturizer is not exactly cheap. It's like um, I think it's like between three and four pounds which is, is not a problem because, you know, I've spent more than that on any products, but the, when you then add in delivery costs, it kind of makes you realise um, that you're probably spending something in the region of, I don't know, £7, seven pounds on a product when you could just walk to the store and get it. And so I've been probably quite lazy and then also quite resentful of going into hair shops, and that's the reason why I don't have that product anymore. Um, so I need, obviously need to go and get it um, because it was just fantastic for my hair. The only drawback of that product was that... Um, it once you've got it in your hair it takes forever to dry um, that's number one number two um, when I do braid outs and I go outside and it's just slightly um, moist or you know humid outside my hair would just literally puff up and then thirdly um, when you do do a braid out um, it doesn't last like you can't um, you know just put on a scarf and then wake up the next day and just sort of like pick out the curls and it'll be fine um, it's that kind of product that you know essentially kind of leaves your hair quite um quite wet and also there's an element of um sort of residue that you get with that product if you're not washing it out um quite frequently which i wasn't doing so um that's the those are the sort of reasons why i stopped um using it coupled with that i've um started to experience a bit of um itching um you guys probably know or maybe don't know that the reason why i start started my hair journey was because my hair was all broken but the reason it was all broken was because my I used to scratch my scalp and it was always always itching there was no sort of dandruff or any flakes or anything like that it was just very very itchy and um, I wasn't entirely sure why I've never really gotten to the root of why it was itching I just assumed it was um, reaction to a bad relaxer um, but <laughs> I don't want to go into that story, but anyway, I just assumed it was a, a reaction to bad relaxer or just um, relaxing my hair too frequently. Um, but um, anyway, that's um, sort of come back and the um, solution um, that I remedy, I guess, that I found for that was um, a peppermint oil. And that was absolutely fantastic for me as well because I used to mix it with um, a bunch of other carrier oils and um, other essential oils. And, um, you know, it really helped reduce the itching. Uh, around all of my my hair but the only downside again was that um, it made my it left a lot of residue on my hair because it's, it's quite it's quite liquidy isn't it and um, unless you have an applicator bottle that only gives you a tiny amount of oil um, as you're sort of um, applying it to your hair um, you'll end up with very very greasy hair and I really hated that as well so after my hair stopped itching I just kind of you just sort of cut out any sort of like um, very oily products from my my regime but I'm gonna have to start incorporating that and figure out a way to apply it without you know over applying it and be prepared to essentially be doing more co-washes 
because my vulnerable spot and um, the area that has always broken has been my crown area. It's always the most tender, especially when people are braiding my hair and it's really, really tender and it hurts like hell when somebody's braiding that area. And not only that, the hair, um, the hair strands, the thickness of the strands are thicker, but they break so easily. They're so brittle and um, they're always thirsting. They're always like really thirsty for, for moisture. I'm not sure if I've talked about this before, but um, the back of my hair um, is, especially this, this centre part, this centre bit here, um, the hair is very coarse and, um, sorry not coarse, the hair is very um, loose in texture and there's not a lot of density there. So when I straighten my hair, that particular patch there in the centre of my um, nape always looks a lot thinner because I don't have the length in my crown to reach down and and um, sort of cover off um, that um, that sort of um, area of um, low density hair so it's really a, a big setback in the sense that if I wanted to um, straighten my hair I you know I look pretty ridiculous having these um, what looks like very thin and see-through hair which I, I really don't like I said I'm gonna go back and use the product that I was using that was working for me just fine and um, you know basically stop feeling like you know I've got this hair game um, down to pat because I really haven't you know um, I just need to just keep on it so um, yeah and also try and just remain positive because you know I have to recognize that I've come an awful long way from where I was before um, you know having essentially been bald in some spots um, you know and I've uh, I have to be proud of the progress I've made but you know <laughs> I stupidly looked at a video um, that Simply Unique posted of her hair two years later she and I probably I think she's probably like maybe about two to three months ahead of me in terms of um, you know starting um, a hair journey or whatever and her hair is like you know down here basically I'm like you know that's just not fair and you know when you then when I then look at myself and I'm like I've had this sort of setback plus my hair doesn't grow as fast as hers it kind of really sort of I don't know I was really happy for her but at the same time I was kind of sad for myself you know that I I wasn't making that kind of progress but you know as my mum always says the the race is not for the swift um I don't know why she says that actually because the race obviously is for the swift you know <laughs> Usain Bolt wouldn't be like the fastest man in the world sometimes you know when African parents just say stuff just to make you feel better and then it's only as an adult that you try and examine it and you're like uh, that doesn't make any sense anyway so <laughs> but I think the point she was making is that you know we you will all cross the finish line at some point um, just obviously not everybody will get there um the fastest you know because it's only it can only be one winner and this um hair journey is not really about winning it's just um it's trying to learn the the best that you can from other people and uh, you know through experiments to try and understand your hair and to love your hair you know even through the the tough times and through the good times so i guess that's probably what i've taken away from having looked at her initial video gotten upset and then you know sort of come to the conclusion that you know we, we will all get there in the end, you know, some people are just faster than others, but you just have to have patience and, um, you know, love, love yourself and love your hair as it is. So that's my message and um, obviously I will report back on uh, any improvements and um, if anyone has any other suggestions, uh, please let me know. I'm happy to take suggestions. I'm looking for suggestions. So, um, yeah, I will, <laughs> I guess that's it. Yeah, I'll see you for the next video. Thanks. Bye.